Hi. In our previous tutorial, we created two pages. Our first page was an HTML form, and our second page was a Java server. The HTML form asked the user for his name and email address. When the user clicked the submit button, the information was sent to the server, and the servlet would render the name, email address, and the IP address of the user. In this tutorial, we're going to create the same example and the same functionality, but using JSPs to render the second page. To begin this tutorial, we're going to create a copy of the example of two project that we used in our second tutorial. We're going to name it example of two. In case you don't have the second example, you can download it from this page. Just as a reminder, please note that the index.html file contains the HTML code that represents our first page. And the servlet example class represents the HTTP servlet that creates the second page. We're going to replace this servlet for a JSP file that will make everything much easier. In the JSP file, the process of writing the output to the user will be much, much easier than with the HTTP servlets. So let's create an example. To begin, we're going to create a new file inside the web content folder. I'm going to right click, create new folder. Web and JSP. We're going to type a name for it. In this case, I'm going to type result of JSP. And we're going to click finish. As you can see, the IDE creates the default content for the JSP file. In our case, remember that we want to print the name, email, and IP address from the client. In our service example, we got the name from the request object that was given to us. You just have to remember that when you are using JSP files, you have several objects that are available to you. This includes the request and the response object. So let's create the JSP file for our tutorial. We are just going to copy the HTML code into the JSP file. I'm going to put the title. And we're going to put the content of the JSP file. Remember that from our previous tutorial, we printed the name, email address, and IP address of the client. Okay. In order to access the values that are available in the request object, we can do it in several ways. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. The first way is defining a script list, which is defined by these tags. All the code that is inside these tags is going to be treated as Java code. In our case, I'm going to create a string variable, and we are going to assign it the request parameter called username. Remember that we use the parameter username because in an index.html form we are sending the value with the name username. To this, we have access the username parameter that the client sent to the server. In order to print the value in the screen, we have several options. In our case, we are going to do it with the following command. The main difference here is that we are putting an equal sign after the percentage name. When you do it in this way, it is called an statement. And when you do it in this way, it's called a JSP expression. A JSP expression will output to the response the value that is inside of it. In this case, it will print the name value. Other way we can do it is access directly the request parameter from the expression. We 
have printed both the name and the email address of the user. To print the IP address, we can use the same code we used for our servlet. In this case, we are going to print the remote address. I'm going to put some breaklines as the great result. After we have printed the name, email, and the IP address of the user, we are done with our JSP. The time that takes to create a JSP file is much less than creating the servlet. Now we have to change the index.html file so that the information is not sent to the servlet but instead it's sent to the JSP file we just created. To do that, in the action attribute, we're going to change the servlet1 value for result.jsp. One additional advantage of using JSP files instead of using servlet is that you no longer need to define the XML configuration that was required. This means that we can delete the servlet and servlet mapping configurations that we had for previous tutorial in the web.xml file. Additionally, I'm going to replace the display name in the web application. Now we can test the Java application in the server. Remember that you need to add the project to the server so that it runs in the front end. I have just added the application. You can see the project appears now. And I click the debug button. Okay, the server is up, it's running. To test the application, we're going to access localhost colon 8080 slash example auto. As you can see, we have the same form that we had for the second tutorial because we have the same index.html file. We're going to put the name and we're going to put an email. And we're going to 